Welcome to another episode of the Mixing and Mastering Lounge. In today's video, we're going to explore five techniques that every Pro Tools engineer should know. So you've stayed up all night with your best client, creating this masterpiece. You come in the following day, and this is what you get. Instead of panicking, you've got three choices. I usually skip first and then go through and just see what's missing. Sometimes it's maybe nothing that I'm going to use. Manually find and relink or automatically find and relink. Automatic often comes up empty-handed and it can tie up your computer for quite a while looking for the file if you have a lot of stuff on your hard drive. So if you choose manual, click OK, you will get this dialog box. And these are the candidates here. For some reason, it just allows you to do one at a time, but you just grab this, bring it to here, click that little box, commit links, verify. One at a time, you're going to do this. They've all come back. Now, if for some reason it can't find them or if it's not in that box and it's still missing, it's possible that the file is actually really missing. Like maybe it's on a thumb drive that somebody else has or maybe the file became corrupted. But this will get you there 90% of the time. I know I should be more diligent about it. A lot of times I get caught up in the work I'm doing and I forget to save as. Sometimes I need to go back and revisit an earlier version. So by using the session file backups, you can get back to earlier versions of the song that you're working on. Under Setup, Preferences, Operation, you want to make sure this Enable Session File Auto Backup is checked. And I keep 100 most recent session backups backing up every three minutes. So virtually I can go back in time in three minute increments. So in order to restore a session from an earlier time, you just go to the session folder, go to session file backups, and here they are. All right, let's say you want to go through and mark out where the hooks are in a song and you want to be able to fly the hook. There's 10 or so tracks in the hook and you know, you don't want to have to re-record each one every time. So to drop markers on the fly, um, on the beat, you push the enter key on the numeric keypad and you can name this whatever you want. The other option is to just push the numeric keypad again and it'll auto name them. And simply by clicking on these, you can be right at each memory location. It's a lot easier to cut and paste things exactly on the beat in the grid mode than it is in slip mode. In order to use grid mode properly, you're going to need to know the tempo of the beat. And if you need to find that, the simple way to do it is identify a two bar loop. And then you click Command I and that brings up the Identify Beat dialog. And we need to tell this that that is two bars long. So if we say this is bar one and this is bar three, hit the OK. And now we get roughly 81 and some change. So I'm going to assume that that's 81.5. And at that point, we want to undo this because we don't want our beat map to start there. We want it to start at zero. If you hit the return key, to take you back to the beginning of the file and then you go here to your tempo set this at 81.5 and then switch to grid mode a lot of times um, i need to go to 16th or 8th notes especially if i'm working on reggaeton or something that's got a 6-8 feel to it but just for the purpose of your typical hip-hop stuff quarter beats will usually work and you come around here and find a downbeat and make sure that's still on the grid and you're good to go. And now we can fly the hook. First thing you want to do is you want to trim up where the hook starts at the downbeat. Then you're going to highlight all three files. Go up here to clip and group. Command D will duplicate them. And then you're going to slide this over to the downbeat of the next hook. Guess what we gonna do? And it's as simple as that. Let's say I wanted to clone all the settings from one song onto another song. Or I wanted to just import the settings that I had on a drum set from one song to the next. In the edit window, you highlight the last track that has to do with the drum, which happens to be, in this instance, my drum sub. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import session data. And I'm going to navigate to the song that I want to clone from. And I'm going to select files that I want to clone. Click OK. So knowing that we're not going to use this second drum performance, because that's from the wrong song, we to take this, highlight all of it, delete those tracks. And we're going to go up here, highlight the drums that we do want to use for this song. And we're going to bring them down into the tracks that we imported from the other song. And then we're going to take out the channels that we're not going to use. Back in the day, it wasn't an uncommon thing to have three people sitting at the mix board, all with notes, moving faders up and down within the mix. In Pro Tools, you can automate all of this. You can even automate every parameter within every plugin. Okay, so you'll notice in the track view selector, we have volume, mute, pan left, pan right. If I wanted to make a track pan left and right, I can take and draw in an envelope change. So now if you watch our pans, when this is on read, it's going to pan. I can copy it all down the timeline. Now if I want to do it on the fly, if I want to pan this by hand, I can take this and I can rewrite my pans manually. Read will obey what's in this envelope. Touch, you can change it on the fly. And, and then when you let it go, it'll recover back to this. And then latch, when you let it go, it's going to stay where you let go of it at. Let's say this is my snare drum track, and I had a reverb dedicated to that snare drum track. I want to start with it, say, for instance, at 30%. Then when it gets to the hook, I want that 30% to change to 50% so that my hook gets bigger reverb than the verse. So this brings up the automatable functions in this plugin. So it's the wet-dry mix that I want to change. So I'm going to automate the wet-dry mix. Now down here, under Dverb, a new envelope has been added. So let's say I get to the hook, and I want it to go from there to there. Now if you look, when it goes to the hook, it moves to 50%, and then when it comes out of the hook, it moves back. 